Hi, I'm Mike Thornton, and welcome to this tutorial on the Loudness Tools and Mastering Tools plugins from RTW. In this video, we're going to cover all the features that are common to both Loudness Tools and Mastering Tools, including how to set them up, either from scratch or by using one of the factory presets. In addition, we'll cover how you resize the plugin window, as well as configure and use the buttons like Start and Stop Stroke Reset. Finally, we'll cover how to set up the standalone versions of Mastering Tools and Loudness Tools. Anyone who's familiar with RTW's hardware meters like the TM3, TM7 or TM9 will be at home with these plugins. With their 50 years of experience, you'll see that the hardware and software products use the same model and RTW have worked hard to make configuration and operation as similar as possible. As we'll see in this video, Loudness Tools and Mastering Tools have a lot of similarities. The key area where they differ is the range of instruments available in each of them. The instruments in Mastering Tools are PPM, which has a range of analog, digital and true peak options, Loudness Sum, that displays momentary, short-term and integrated loudness, Loudness Numeric, which displays the full range of loudness data. Loudness Range, or LRA, which has a selection of layout options including the Magic LRA. Vector Scope, in both two-channel and four-channel modes. Surround Sound Analysis, which visualizes the dynamic behavior of all the display elements and to be able to see the balance of stereo and surround programs intuitively at a glance. Then we've got the real-time analyzer with third, sixth and twelve octave options. And finally, correlator with stereo, 5.1 and 7.1 modes. Loudness Tools concentrates on the tools that we need for loudness metering and so has these instruments. PPM with a range of analog, digital and true peak options. Loudness Sum that displays the momentary, short term and integrated loudness. Loudness Numeric which displays the full range of loudness data. Loudness Range or LRA for short with a selection of layout options including their Magic LRA. And finally a Stereo Correlator instrument. As with all plugins in any DAW, like Pro Tools, you can choose one of the inserts from the menu, select the appropriate RTW plugin, in this case Mastering Tools, and notice that I have Pro Tools configured to show my plugins by category and manufacturer. If you have Pro Tools configured differently, it may not look quite the same. Once you've selected your chosen RTW plugin, you'll see a blank window like this. In Pro Tools, the RTW plugin will automatically match the number of channels on that track. But note that for some DAWs, like Sequoia, Premiere, Final Cut and Samplitude, you will need to first select the corresponding channel mode for the selected track. Pro Tools always uses Fill Mode, which is Left, Center, Right, Left Surround, Right Surround and LFE within the mixer but other DAWs can be configured with different channel modes, hence the need to be able to configure the RTW plugins to match. Back to the plugin. Both plugins have a dock, similar to the Mac OS X operating system. Click on the RTW logo in the centre of the bottom frame and up will pop the dock. Notice that when you move the mouse away from the bottom of the window, the dock is hidden and bringing the mouse back down to the bottom will reveal the dock. There's now no need to click on the RTW logo. Depending on whether you have mastering tools or loudness tools, you will get more or less icons in the dock. On the left hand side of the dock, each icon represents one of the instruments available in that plugin. 
and we'll come back to these shortly. But for now, I want to show you the settings option, which is this gear wheel icon at the right hand end of the dock. Click on the gear wheel icon to open the general settings. In any of the settings, you can reveal or hide sections by clicking on these arrows on the right hand side. Clicking on a down arrow will open the section. Clicking on an up arrow will close that section. In general settings, we can set the language to either English or German. Enable the tooltips, which when active, pop up as you hover over a tool to tell you what they do. However, once you're completely confident with the plugin, you may wish to turn this feature off. But for now, we'll leave it on. The Units option will show or hide the units next to the instrument scales. So let's close up the General tab and move on to the Preset tab. You can load the factory presets from here or use the presets direct from the DAW like this. Next comes Audio. From here you can check and adjust the track routing but note that with Pro Tools it'll be fine as Pro Tools has a fixed track configuration set internally. Overhold determines how long overs are displayed for and the default here is one second. Over sensitivity adjusts the point at which the true peak over display will light. This is set automatically for all the common delivery specs to the appropriate threshold but you can then adjust this here if you wish. For example, the maximum true peak for the EBU R128 spec is minus 1 dB true peak. But the delivery spec refers to a maximum of minus 3 dB true peak, so as not to overload lossy codecs. So you may prefer to set this to minus 3 dB true peak to help you protect the lossy codecs from distorting. Moving on to loudness, this is where you can set up how the loudness instruments will display all the loudness parameters. If we click on loudness type, you can see that we have all the main loudness delivery specs covered, as well as a number of less common specs too. This should match the delivery spec for your territory. For me here in the UK, that will be EBU R128. Next, we have the scale options. These will change depending on which loudness type you've chosen. So if we change the loudness type to ATSC A85, notice that I have a different range of scale options to those when the loudness type is set to EBU R128. RTW have taken care to pre-configure their loudness meters to change all the corresponding settings to their correct settings for your loudness spec, so you don't need to worry about making sure that all these settings are correct. With EBU R128, I tend to use the plus 9 option, as most of the work I do is for broadcast work with a relatively small dynamic range, and so I prefer to use the plus 9 scale. If you wanted to display a wider dynamic range, then you could use the plus 18 scale, for example. Most of the time, the weighting filter will be greyed out because most of the common broadcast loudness workflows are now based on BS1770. But if we switch the loudness type to SPL, for example, then you can see that we have a range of weighting options available. So back to EBU R128, and because the target level is linked to the loudness type, and as I've selected EBU R128, the target is automatically set to minus 23 LUFS. Moving down, we have the tolerance settings for each of the three loudness meters in the BS1770 standard. What's even better is you can adjust the tolerances separately for each of the three meters. Notice that the default is plus and minus one LU for all three meters. However, I prefer to have the momentary, the M tolerance range, set to plus and minus three LU, the short term to plus and minus two LU, and the integrated meter set to plus and minus one LU. 
The tolerance zone will then display green on the meters and I find this configuration works really well. You can even change the labels for each of the three meters but for me M, S and I are just fine. Finally in the loudness section you can determine what happens to the start measurement automatically. The tooltips explain it really well. The auto start after load reset will start the loudness measurement process as soon as the preset has been loaded. Manual control only means that you'll need to press the start button to start the loudness measurement process. Auto start gate will start the loudness measurement process when the incoming audio passes a threshold set by the auto start level control here. This is very useful in live sessions, perhaps where you're in a new studio for example and you don't want to have to remember to hit the start button at the beginning of the news broadcast. Auto start gate reset will clear the previous measurements before starting the new loudness measurement process. Moving on to the stop measurement options, the manual option means that you can only stop the loudness measurement process by pressing the stop button on the plug-in display. Auto stop gate will automatically stop the loudness measurement process when the incoming audio drops below the threshold set by the auto stop level. Auto stop gate and time will stop the loudness measurement process when the incoming audio has dropped below the threshold for a length of time set by the auto stop time control. That's the loudness section. The loudness advanced section will be all greyed out if you're using one of the BS1770 related specs. These settings only become active on some of the other loudness settings like LEQ. Finally, the info section shows the plugin details like the version number and you can check for updates and view the RTW manual from here too. So that's the system settings covered. But we still have a blank plugin window. You have two main ways of populating the window with instruments. One is to use presets, in this case from the Pro Tools presets menu, or by building your window from scratch using the dock. Let's start with a PPM instrument. Click and hold and drag out onto the window. Notice that a grid appears and you'll see a green box denoting the initial size of the PPM meter instrument. When you're happy with its initial position, then let go and the instrument will be created. You can now resize it to suit but notice it has to work to the grid unit sizes. You can configure the settings for any instrument by clicking on the gear wheel icon and choosing the appropriate tab in the settings window, or directly from the instrument by clicking anywhere within the instrument and then clicking on the mini gear wheel icon near the top right hand corner of the instrument. We'll look at how to configure each instrument of the Loudness Tools and Mastering Tools plugins in dedicated videos. You can continue to drag instruments out of the dock until you've built up your own combination and layout of instruments. Notice that to get a set of buttons, once you have a Loudness instrument out on the window, the next time you drag from the Loudness instrument in the dock, you'll get a button module which you can resize and orientate to suit the space in the window. Instead of building up the plugin from scratch, you can use one of the factory presets, which you can access from the plugin presets here in Pro Tools, or from the presets section of the system settings here. You can then make any small changes to the preset, perhaps making the numbers instrument a little smaller, making the buttons bigger, or perhaps make the loudness range instrument wider. Then when you're happy, you can save it as a new preset, either from within the Pro Tools presets by using a save as here and renaming it with a new name. Or of course, you can save it using the RTW presets from the settings menu in the dock. 
and click on the Save icon and give it an appropriate name. If the size of the plugin window doesn't work for you, then you can change the overall size and shape of the plugin window. You can change the size of the window either by getting hold of the bottom right hand corner of the plugin window, like this. Notice that I can make it bigger but I can't make it smaller than the current instrument layout will allow. Alternatively, you can reset the window by going into the dock and selecting one of the preset window sizes. Note that some of the window sizes are greyed out. You'll see that if I try and choose one of the smaller window sizes, the display goes red, showing me that I cannot use this size unless I change the instrument layout so it'll fit inside the smaller window size. You might want to build a selection of instrument layouts for different window sizes, so that if screen real estate gets tight, you can quickly switch to a smaller plug-in window without having to spend time modifying the instrument layout in the middle of the session. When you get RTW loudness tools or mastering tools, as well as the plugin, you get a standalone version too. Some users prefer to configure a laptop as a dedicated device for loudness tools or mastering tools, while others use the standalone application on the same computer, but allocate a dedicated screen just for the application. But whichever way you prefer to use the standalone application, you will need to set up the audio I.O. for it. Run the standalone application and you'll get a window like this. Select the desired channel configuration from mono through to 7.1. Because one input channel is activated when the application starts up, you'll almost certainly get this window come up as the number of active channels will be different to your chosen channel mode. So you'll get this message telling you about the channel setup mismatch and asking you to correct the number of input channels to match your channel mode. To do this, in the standalone application, go into the dock and click on the gear wheel icon to open up the general settings. Click on the presets tab and then go into audio setup. What you see here will depend on whether you're using a Mac OS X or Windows operating system. But let's look at both options. On the Mac, you'll see this window. First, select the audio interface you want to use from the audio setup drop-down menu. You'll have a choice between the built-in I.O. or any other available interfaces attached to your computer. In this example, I'm going to use the Mac's own built-in inputs and use a stereo version of the application. Then make sure that the correct sample rate and bit depth are selected and click OK. On the Windows machine, there are a few more options. Select the type from the audio device type drop-down menu and the audio device from the device drop-down menu. Note that these two drop-down menus will display all the interfaces and audio drivers available on your system. Choose the interface or sound card that you want to use with this standalone application and select the appropriate options for it. Choose the appropriate inputs from your selected interface or sound card and then select the desired sample rate and bit depth. You will also see that there is a control panel button available, which can be used to access the control panel of the installed sound card if settings have to be changed or if you need to activate the loopback. There's also a reset device button here to reset the audio interface. This is sometimes needed after the properties of a device have been changed in its custom control panel.